Right, so I put these nuts here for test and I'm hoping that tomorrow the weather is gonna be nicer and we can take it for a test drive and see how that's gonna affect the clutch operation. All right, I haven't installed the handles yet, but we just got a delivery. So we got the switch, which we can install anytime, but this is most important. We got the links, so nice. They were expensive, but we got them in less than 24 hours. Anyway, so I'm gonna install this before I finish the door because it dried out outside and um, we want to go for a test drive because it's going to be raining a little bit later in the afternoon. So <laughs> I'm going to ch change these quickly. I'm not going to hold you here. And then we're going to go for a test drive. That's kind of interesting. I'm just watching the owner of the car disassembling a chainsaw <laughs> and inspecting the cylinder. Nice. Good job, Dave. Okay, so the old ones are out. The new ones are in. Now it's time for a test drive. Oh, of course, we need to put some wheels first. All right, we're warming her up now. And I, just, and I realized the other day that I never showed you the gauges, how, if they work. So you see now the fuel shows, doesn't show full anymore. It shows three quarters, so that's proper. The voltmeter works and the temperature we will see later because now it's still cold. Yeah, the choke is back. All right, so the temperature also picked up and it's not fluctuating. David said before that the temperature was fluctuating. Anyways, she's idling a little bit high and I think she's running a little rich, but we will see. Anyways, let's see how the clutch is gonna operate now. Yeah, still the same. Hmm. Yeah, as soon as I let go, so I think what I achieved by spacing out the slave cylinder is that now I'm using different parts of the stroke of the cylinder. Before I was using from uh, half to the end, now I'm using from one quarter to three quarters maybe, but it's still the same length of stroke, you know what I mean? Okay, here we go. Yeah, as soon as I let go of the clutch, like half an inch, and it goes, starts going. Oh, now the gasket is not on this door and it's shaking. Yeah, you see, it's gonna rain soon. doesn't run very well, like not well at all, look at that. Initially she ran well, but that was for like literally two minutes and then she started skipping. Sounds like the spark plugs are fouled. Yeah, anyway. Unfortunately, spacing out the clutch didn't help. Like I said, probably we just shifted the part of the stroke of the slave cylinder that we use. We didn't make it longer, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try one last thing that I can think of. I'm gonna try to bleed it, maybe, if it has a little bit of air inside, but the pedal feels like 
really solid, so I don't think that's the problem, but let's check it, let's try to bleed it. And the other thing would be a different master cylinder, but I think this is a correct master cylinder, let me show you. So this is the master cylinder, and I think it is for Rover, because I googled this number here. So here it says 541104, and when I googled this number, it turns out this is a master cylinder for Rover, but on the side of the cylinder, on this side, here you can't read it, but on this side, on the Rover one, it says TRW, so it's made by, it is by TRW, but it also says three quarters. So I guess this is the bore of the cylinder. Um, the one on, uh, the one that most motors sells for TR6 is uh, 0.7, so it is less volume even. So I was thinking that if this was the wrong master cylinder, um, and if it had too little volume, the volume wasn't enough to push the slave cylinder far enough. But it turns out that this even has a bigger volume, which means that it should push much more than uh, the original one. So I don't know what's wrong here, but yeah, like I said, that's the last resource. I'm going to try to bleed it. Let's see how much fluid there is here. Wow, it's a lot of fluid, maybe because I pushed the cylinder back, right? Yeah. Anyways, we're gonna bleed it now and we'll go from there. All right, so I bled it a little bit with my vacuum pump and uh, removed these nuts from uh, where I had it spaced and uh, didn't see any air coming out, but anyways, Let's go for another test drive and see. I don't think we did anything. I think, I don't know. My only explanation is that this master cylinder is wrong, but can't tell for sure. The same thing. Yeah, as soon as I let go, it goes, so. I don't know. It's not bad, I mean, it just, this engages and disengages very low but the other option is that they stowed or they didn't change the clutch the clutch plate even though they say they did in the invoice but maybe they didn't change the clutch plate and that's why it's not disengaging I don't know The interesting part is that she fixed itself. Now she drives fantastic. I don't know what was going on. That's weird. Anyways, we're still gonna hook her up to the scanner. All right, so these are replaced as well it is the next day by the way so i replaced the gaskets and now the door doesn't shake anymore it keeps it a little bit open here but i guess the gasket needs to saddle a little bit um i also worked on the top i replaced these three buttons on both sides because they were broken they were plastic inside i don't know here, there's one. Whoops. Oh my God. So you see they were all broken. So we replaced those and now they fasten nicely. It is really tight though. The way it was installed, I have to actually heat it up with the heat gun so I can stretch the vinyl and fasten them. So hopefully now that it sits with the top on, it's gonna stretch. If not, uh, that's a note for David. Dave, when you're putting the top on, you have to put it halfway up. Then you're gonna be able to fasten these three 
and only then you can finish fast on the front. If you fast on the front first, then these three are gonna be extremely hard. Hopefully it's gonna stretch a little bit here now that it's sitting under tension, but if not, that's the way. This side as well, they were black, but I didn't have black ones. So I installed chrome ones, but they match these. Um, this gasket is done as well. And I think that's everything for the interior kind of and the cosmetic stuff. So now I got also this switch, so let's replace it. Before we replace it though, I wanna check it. I wanna see which two legs are normally closed when there's no pressure. So it has I, S and P. Okay. First of all, let me see if any of them has continuity with ground. So that's, that's ground here. No, none of them have continuity with ground and that's how it should be. Uh, so let's see. Okay. What? How's that possible? Okay. Okay, so these two, S and P, are normally closed. This one, somehow, I don't know what I'm doing, but sometimes it has continuity, sometimes it doesn't. Let me see S and this one. You see? I don't know. Oh, there you go. Brand new out of the pack. That's ridiculous. Anyways. We're gonna use S and P. He's going to start pissing oil from there. Okay, let's check this one. So we said six and nine o'clock. Nothing here. Nothing here. And nothing here. And nothing here. Yeah. We knew this one was garbage. So I didn't show you that, but I ran these wires from the light. The, the black one goes to ground through the bulb and the red one goes to ignition power. So once they close, the light comes on. We check that, we know for a fact. And there you go. It's installed. Now let's test it. Cold start. The light comes on. And off. Good. Okay, let's turn it off now. On. There's still oil pressure. Eventually it has to come on, there you go. So when there's no oil pressure, it comes on. Good, this one works. One more problem solved. One more problem that we have to fix actually is the lights. So you see now, if you, I don't know how well you can see there, but this one is high beam, this one is low beam. When I switch, now this one is high beam, this one is low beam, but the stock here, when it's down, it's low beam, when it's up, it's high beam, and here you can see the light. So now the high beam is on, now it's off. So now we are at low beam, but that light is low beam, this is high. 
you see now it went too low so that's how we need to be for low beam so this light is the one that we have to reverse so let's go figure out where the connections are okay i found them right here i had to undo this uh, shroud and these are the ones so the blue with white and the blue with red are the high and low beam so we're gonna switch them and let's see if that's gonna help like that let's test it now okay um, so that's low beam and i think they're both low now yeah perfect low high low high low high low high low high oh my god i'm getting high <laughs> okay nicely tucked again the bonnet is grounded well <laughs> i don't know why don't ask if that's how it came so i just left it there but there's no reason the bonnet needs to be grounded and it is grounded through the hinge anyways but whatever so i'm gonna do one more test of all the lights now to make sure that everything still works and i think that's everything from the list i'm gonna go double check but i believe that's everything all right guys so uh i'm editing this video right now and i realized that i don't have <laughs> an ending for it and it turns out to be pretty short video this was meant to be added to the previous video but the previous one became too long so i decided to split it in two but somehow the other one is 40 minutes this one is like 15 <laughs> but whatever anyways we can talk here for half an hour and stretch it a little bit to make it long again <laughs> i'm good like that i can rumble for hours you know <laughs> anyways um yeah so that's everything for this car we decided with David that we're not going to do anything about the clutch for now. I mean, it drives well, it shifts well, it doesn't grind gears or anything. It's just that it, it engages and disengages too low. And uh, that's fine. My Spitfire is like that too, and I drive it, and I drive it no problem. If he feels like it is uh, affecting how it shifts, then we're going to have to do something about it. Uh, but for now we decided that's how we're gonna leave it so thanks for watching guys thanks for commenting and subscribing and uh, stay tuned for one more episode i filmed it already actually i filmed it in the middle of this episode <laughs> i went and i did all the tuning of the engine and all that and then i came back and i finished with uh, assembling the interior so there's gonna be one more video about this car so even though i say that this is everything from the list yeah i'm forgetting that i haven't showed you that part yet about tuning it up with the scope so stay tuned for that and uh, once again thanks for watching commenting subscribing sharing supporting the channel and uh, i really really appreciate it so i'll see you soon bye